I'm tired of these females lying. Episode number 13. Alright, first, before we even get into it, I don't ever ask for likes at the beginning of videos, but I feel like this video might get some dislikes from all the feminists out there and the Gabby supporters because I'm about to say some real shit that I know people are not ready to hear, so if you could drop a like on the video right now, Call of Duty Athlete to Call of Duty Athlete on some real shit, it would be much appreciated. So anyways, I'm sure most of you guys have heard about the situation by now. It's all over Twitter, YouTube, everything, right? I'm sure you've heard of it, but just in case, I will try to summarize exactly what happened as quick as I can. So basically, Rice Gum and The Gabby Show were at this YouTuber's birthday party. There was a whole bunch of YouTubers there and stuff, and Gabby went up to him and started recording him to post on her Snapchat, as you can see here. Hey, Rice Gum! I just challenged you to a live battle on Snapchat. Would you do it? Let's, no. Live rap battle. Why wouldn't you do it? Let's, no, I don't want to do it. Alright, so Rice doesn't have his ghostwriter today. It's fine. I think we can still battle. I think we're good. No? You don't want to do it? So, pretty much, she wanted to rap battle him or whatever, and he wasn't down. Also, I should note that they have both dropped diss tracks on each other in the past. They had some previous drama. So, I guess that's why she was trying to bring that whole diss track thing up again. But, that clip right there that you just saw was what started this whole thing. So, after that, we find out that he didn't want her to be recording him in the first place. And that he actually specifically asked her not to record him and not to post the videos on Snapchat and she ignored that request and kept on recording him and posting the videos. So now this is where we don't really know what happened. There's no video evidence of what actually went down. All we have is both of their stories and also stories of the other people who were at the party who witnessed what happened. But here are the allegations of what happened. Gabby is claiming that Rice Gum hit her and broke her phone. Okay, so update. Sorry if it looks like I'm crying. Um, Rice Gum didn't think that joke was very funny and he hit me in the middle of a party and shattered my phone. I can show you that in a sec. Like, everybody's like, did he hit you? And I was like, yeah, he did. But I make a joke about your scandal and you hit me and break my phone. And let's say, because I don't have any photo evidence, just like eyewitnesses of him grabbing me, holding me down and hitting me and like twisting my arm, he still shattered my phone. So that's her side of the story, and now Rice Gum's side of the story is that he never hit her, but yes, he did break her phone. And we also have further evidence with a statement from someone who was at the party as a witness and who saw the whole thing, and this is what he says. So basically, you know, what happened was me and Rice Gum were talking, you know, chit chatting or whatever, catching up, and you know, Gabby sits on the couch and sticks the camera in his face, snapping, you know, and obviously. You know, she didn't mean any harm by it. She was just joking around, but she just keeps snapping and snapping. So, you know, so he tells her like, hey, can you, can you not post that? And I think maybe she didn't realize that he was being serious and thought that maybe he was joking. So she just kept snapping and, you know, doing more snaps, talking about the diss and, and on the video, you know, or whatever. And, you know, he, he asked her, I think maybe like two or three more times, like, hey, can you not post that? And she just kept filming and he just jumped up, you know, and went to reach for her phone and she's sitting on the couch, she's standing up, and it was more of like a tug of war, you know, them pulling the phone back and forth, maybe for a few seconds, and then he snatched the phone out of her hand and slammed down the ground and broke the phone and then walked out. Did I see him hit her? Definitely not. Did he twist her arm? Definitely not. Um, he wasn't pinning her down. He didn't hit her, he didn't twist her arm. I, I would say honestly that this was just, you know, it was more of like a tug of war between, you know, grabbing the phone and he slammed the phone down and broke it. That's pretty much all that really happened. Okay, so that's pretty much the situation. We're all on the same page here. We all know what went down, so let us discuss a few things. First, let's start with the phone because I think that's something we can all agree on. Obviously, I'm not gonna condone breaking someone's phone. Y you just can't do that, so yes, obviously, he should not have broken her phone. Now, I do have to say that he did pay for the phone. I believe what happened is he paid her two 
$2,000 and then she refunded a thousand of it. So in total, he paid her a thousand dollars to replace her phone. And I mean, a phone does not cost a thousand dollars. I think I paid like $500 for my phone. So anyone out there, feel free to come break my phone and then pay me a thousand dollars. I will take that $500 profit any day. That is worth it to me. So bottom line, of course, don't break people's phones, but she definitely should not have been recording him in the first place if he didn't want to be recorded. I'm not sure on the whole legal aspect of it, like, are you allowed to just go around recording people without their permission? I feel like there has to be some sort of restrictions on that. I know, for example, on YouTube, whenever people are, like, recording people to post on YouTube, they always have to ask them, hey man, do you mind if I post this on YouTube? And if the person says no, then you'll see them blur out their face for privacy reasons, and then they'll post a video, right? So, if someone tells you, hey, don't record me, and then you continue to record them and post it on social media for thousands of people to see, I mean, I'm no lawyer, but I feel like there might be an issue there. But putting the legal aspect aside, it's just not cool, man. It's just called fucking respect. If someone asks you, hey, don't record me, don't fucking record them. Simple as that. If I ask you multiple times, hey, stop fucking recording me, and you just keep putting that phone in my face, is that not harassment? Like, at what point does it have to get to before I can do something about it? You know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't know what the correct action there is. I guess walk away from the situation and then if they continue to follow you and record you, then I mean, I don't fucking know what you gotta do. But something needs to be done there, obviously. But grabbing the phone and smashing it on the ground is probably not the initial reaction you should have to that situation. So to wrap up the phone thing, they were both definitely in the wrong on that one. But let's get on to the real issue here. This this whole assault allegation. Since we don't really have a video of what happened, there's not really any evidence or facts to go off of. Gabby is posting some images of her supposed injuries on Twitter and on Snapchat, and she is claiming that Ricegum did this to her. So she posted this picture of her leg pointing to a scratch, and it's pretty hard to see, but I guess you can kind of see a little something there. There. And then she also posted this picture of her shoulder, and you definitely can see some scratch marks there on her shoulder. Now, I found these injuries a little strange because you don't get scratch marks from being hit. And in her own words, she quite literally claimed that he grabbed her, held her down, and hit her. Of him grabbing me, holding me down, and hitting me, and like twisting my arm. So apparently he grabbed her, held her down, and then hit her in the leg and the shoulder, because those are the injuries that she keeps pointing to. You'll notice nowhere in any of the Snapchats or the YouTube videos or the tweets or anything, nowhere does she say exactly exactly where he hit her. So that all sounded very weird to me, and I'm not the only one who noticed this and thought it was weird because now she is changing her story up a little bit, and this is her new claim. And as far as, like, him, like, assaulting me, I guess is the word, um, he didn't, like, beat the shit out of me, if that's the impression that you guys are getting. But he grabbed me, like, twisted my arm, I think I said that, and, like, held me down, and I have, like, those scratches, like, up here and on my wrist and arm, and, like, I had a big scratch on my leg. I don't want it to seem like I'm, like, blowing this up, and, like, he, like, punched me in the face and, like, destroyed my phone beyond repair. No, it's, like, cracked screen, cracked camera, scratches and stuff. So, you'll notice now a huge difference in her current version of the events compared to what she was saying before. You'll notice that she's very careful now not to use the phrase hit me. So based off her own backtracking and based off what the guy who witnessed this whole thing has said, and just based off of using my fucking brain, here's what probably happened, okay? She went over to record him, he asked her to stop, she continued to record him, so he then took her phone and smashed it. At no point do I believe that he actually hit her as she originally claimed. Now, what did happen is, obviously, the phone didn't magically end up in his hands. He had to physically take it away from her, so there was some sort of altercation and there was some sort of struggle there, and within this struggle, she ended up with some scratch marks on her or whatever but to describe that 
as someone hitting you is not appropriate. That is a completely different thing than what actually happened. So honestly, let's just cut all the bullshit and let's just call it how it really is. So this was an exaggeration. Honestly, it was a borderline lie, if not an actual lie of what actually happened in order to manipulate people for sympathy, attention, money, whatever the fucking reasoning may be. Probably a combination of all of those things but let me just ask you a question because this really sums it all up perfectly all right if you feel that someone assaulted you if you feel that someone hit you and damaged you physically emotionally mentally all that right why is your first response to post it on social media why is your first response not to go to the police that's what a normal person does who feels wronged who feels assaulted if you were truly as assaulted as as you claim, you would have gone to the police. You wouldn't have been seeking attention on social media. Simple as that. There is no other explanation for it. But see, that's not what has happened here. What has happened here is we have someone who is seeking attention and monetary gain off of domestic violence. Here is an image of her social blade. As you can see, she's getting a couple thousand subscribers every day. And then magically, on the 29th, she gains almost 17 thousand in one day and then today she's already gained over five thousand and she'll probably finish with over ten thousand again because it's not even at noon yet as of me making this video we're not even halfway in the day as of me looking at these stats and she's already at five and now here are her twitter stats so as you see she gains just over a thousand followers every day and then magically on the 29th she gets five thousand and then shit today she's already got over twelve thousand that has to be a coincidence man there's no way there's any correlation there i mean i just wonder how people can be so fucking stupid man just think about this for a second they're at a youtuber party in front of dozens of people do you think if some dude punched a girl in the face, I'm sorry, let me state it correctly. Do you think if a dude grabbed a girl, held her down, and then started hitting her, do you not think that maybe the people around there would probably fucking react to that? This whole thing is just not adding up, man. And then it doesn't help your case when you have someone like Tana Mojo coming into your defense when she quite literally did the exact same thing thing to iDubbbz. She had this whole story about iDubbbz putting her in a chokehold and grabbing onto her and not letting her get away. She was struggling and then the video comes out and none of it is true. It's just all exaggerated which is exactly what is happening here. And then we can't forget about these people. The people who are all like, oh, this is why domestic violence victims don't want to come forward. They just get called a liar. Nobody believes them. Look what you're doing. You're blaming the victim. But you see, it's actually quite the opposite. People like Gabby and Tana are why domestic violence victims get called liars. That's why they don't want to come out and be called liars because a lot of girls come out here and do lie as we've seen and it makes it that much harder for the people that really are victims and do deserve some sort of justice, it makes it so much harder for them to get what they deserve because we have idiots like this coming out and exaggerating everything. It's actually pretty fucking disgusting of you to use an issue as serious as that for your own personal gain. To pretend like, oh, you're some sort of hero. Oh, I'm inspiring women everywhere to come out and talk about what happened to them when nothing even really fucking happened to you, miss. Hey, you know what? Let's wrap this up. I think anyone with a brain realizes what actually happened here, so let me just say this to all the ladies out there. Actually, no. Men can also be a victim of abuse as well. I mean, I ain't let no female beat my ass personally, but it does happen a lot more than you'd think. So all men and women out there and all the other fucking 87 genders we have, if you ever feel like you have been assaulted or you're a victim of abuse, the proper thing to do in that situation is to go to the police. Not post it on social media. That's not the proper response. Well, it is if you aren't really a victim and you're just seeking attention, but if you really are a victim, the normal thing to do is go to the police. So I think that pretty much wraps the whole thing up. Thank you all for watching the video. If you have made it all the way to the end, I would appreciate 
appreciate a like if you are an intelligent human being. You can go ahead and leave a dislike now if you are one of Gabby's supporters, or you've probably already clicked off the video after disliking, or you know, maybe you're part of the white knight virgin squad out there that has to defend all these females. No matter what happens, you know, just, just some advice to all you pathetic fucks out there. That ain't gonna get you nowhere, by the way. Like, you keep defending them, but that ain't gonna get you what you want. I'm just letting you know. Anyways, thank you again for watching the video. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not already. Follow me on Twitter. Link's in the description down below. Have a good day and peace out. And don't forget, I'm tired of these females lying.